Hey, I'm Justin. Welcome to Diabet Tech. On here, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management. And today, I'm talking all about two of the leading CGMs, or continuous glucose monitors, the Libre 3 from Abbott and the Dexcom G7 from Dexcom. These are part of the latest generation of continuous glucose monitors. The Libre 3 is FDA cleared for closed loop systems, automated systems, but it is not available yet on those systems, and the Dexcom G7, companies like Omnipod and Tandem are working to bring support to their closed loop systems with that CGM as well. I'll get more into closed loop later in this show. First of all, what are CGMs? They are continuous glucose monitors, they adhere to your body, and they test your interstitial fluid for your blood sugar number. But they're not testing your blood sugar, that's interstitial fluid. That lags about 10 to 20 minutes uh, in time behind what your actual blood sugar number is, but they are so key in understanding how foods affect you and if you're rising quickly, dropping quickly, and understanding trends basically over time. They are great for letting you know that you're gonna have a bad high, a bad low soon, so you can address it. And eventually, your closed loop systems, your insulin pumps will be able to address it for you. Now in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the two based off of just all of their stats. I'm not giving you really a user experience video. I am gonna come out with that. I already had my Dexcom G7 review drop a few months ago, and you should check that out. Uh, I'm also gonna be putting on a Libre 3, testing that out for two weeks, and then I'll be able to make that video comparing the two as a user. I'm also going to give the Libre 3 its own dedicated review, so stay tuned for that as well. All right, let's get into this comparison. Let's start off with the size and build. So the Dexcom G7 is 60% smaller than the Dexcom G6. The size is about two quarters stacked on top of one another, and it's an all-in-one device. The sensor and the transmitter are both in that one device that you put onto your body. The same thing with the Libre 3, it's an all-in-one device. It's significantly smaller than the G7. It is the size of two stacked pennies. It is ridiculously small, but I also have to say that the Dexcom G7 also feels so small that like I never even realize it's there. When it comes to application, they're both pretty similar. With the G7, you use one device that you push along your body, press a button, and it clips in. Now the cool thing about the G7 is that its warm up period of only 30 minutes starts as soon as you trigger that button. With the Libre 3, there's a bit smaller of an applicator that you push along your body, press the button, and it goes in, but the warm up time does not start instantly. In order to start the warm up, you'll have to scan it with your phone, but that's the only time you're gonna have to scan it. It's not like the Libre 2 where you had to scan for readings. The warm up time for the Libre Ray 3 is 60 minutes, so you're going to be spending more time waiting for those numbers with that device. It's important for me to say that with the Dexcom G7 sensor warm-up, yeah, it's 30 minutes, but you can stack the sensors. So basically what I've been doing as a G7 user is I've been putting one on, leaving, old, leaving the older one on, getting those readings from it, and as soon as the new one is warmed up, I take off the old one and I plug in the new one. For wear time, the Dexcom G7 lasts 10 days with a 12 hour grace period after. So essentially 10 and a half days. The Libre 3 lasts a bit longer, 14 days. So that's a significant amount of time. But if you're going through insurance companies for these, Ultimately, it most likely may be a similar price for that month supply. So even though you're changing your Dexcom one extra time a month, pricing may not matter. But of course, that's all up to your insurance company, which is a whole thing of its own. With the G7, it is approved for people ages two and up. Now, it is approved on the back of the arm for adults and for children that are two to six. It could be on their upper buttocks. Also, outside of the US, it is approved for the abdomen area. Personally, I have been using it there sometimes, and I get into that in my G7 review, but I like it. The Libre 3 is only approved for the back of the arm, similar to the G7 here in the US, and I find that I get good readings with both devices in that area. And yes, I have used one other Libre 3 in the past, and it did get pretty good readings. 
when it comes to durability, the G7 stays on very well, at least with my body. I've been wearing the G7 for six months and I have never had a G7 come off unless I like hit it on a door, which happened like once, but it's never come off on its own. And that includes in the summer when I'm swimming, when I'm sweating, and that is a huge test. I find that because there is less adhesive than the G6, there's less to like really start coming up and really pulling it off. And it's been incredible. I will say on days seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that there is a little bit coming off on the edges, but more often than not, I don't need to address it. All Dexcom G7 applicators come with an overlay patch that Dexcom says needs to be used but I've never used it. Uh, but they, they say that they should be used, especially to get that full 10 days. If it falls off too early, their customer support is pretty good about replacing them. When it comes to the Libre 3, like I said, I've only worn one before, but it did stay on well for those two weeks. I didn't get to test it in the summertime, so I can't really give you that experience. When it comes to water resistance, the Libre 3 can be in three feet of water for up to 30 minutes, and the Dexcom G7 can be in water up to eight feet for up to 24 hours. So it's obvious that the G7 has a way better chance of survival, especially if you're going swimming for a long period of time. Now connection, this is where we do see a big difference between the two. With the Dexcom G7, your phone needs to be within a 20 foot range. Now I will say, after using the G7 for a while now, connection issues have been a thing. I feel like I really can't go too far away from my phone, uh, otherwise it disconnects. And it is significantly worse, the connection, than the G6, uh, which I didn't find to be too bad, actually. I could walk around my entire house and I'd still be connected. With the G7, I really don't have that. Now what the Libre 3 does have over that is the Libre 3 has a 33 foot distance, which is typical for Bluetooth. Bluetooth ranges about up to 35 feet away. So that 33 feet for Libre 3 will give flexibility to users, 30% more flexibility than the G7. The Libre 3 also one-ups the G7 when it comes to how often it's sending you the information. Unlike the original Libre 2, which you needed to scan for numbers, the Libre 3 instantly sends glucose numbers to your phone every single minute. Whereas the G7, it sends it every five minutes. Now, that's been totally fine. Five minutes totally allows my closed loop system to do its thing, but think of how much more on top of blood sugar and insulin delivery closed loop systems will be when they are working on a one minute basis. They can make decisions five times faster than the G7. So it will be interesting to see once the Libre 3 is connected to these systems, how that differentiates itself from the G7. Now, speaking about compatibility, neither of these devices are compatible with closed loop systems. Here in the US, we have Omnipod 5 and Tandem's T-Slim pump, Moby coming soon, an even smaller pump, the world's smallest hybrid loop system. Those systems are currently working to get compatibility with the Libre 2, the Libre 3, and the Dexcom G7. The new Libre 2 doesn't require you to scan it anymore, so it will be interesting to see how that works when it comes out. That's gonna come out before Libre 3 and maybe even before the Dexcom G7. There is a workaround for the G7. I currently use it. I am a DIY looper. I use a system that is not FDA cleared, and that allows me to connect my Omnipod Dash with the G7. So I'm currently on a closed loop system with those two devices. When it comes to the applications on your phone, the Dexcom G7 app has clarity right on it, which is a great resource to see how you're doing over time. The alerts are fantastic. There's also a ton of customization and you can also log events like exercise and foods. The Libre 3 app also allows you to log different events as well. I'm not as well versed in that app, but I do know that it also sends alerts when you're having lows, highs, etc., which the G7 does as well. Now, when it comes to Apple Watch support, or really any watch support, the Dexcom G7 has an application on the Apple Watch. You can use a widget, you can see your blood sugars there. Even the Dexcom Follow app, which allows people to follow blood sugar numbers for as many people as they want, 
that has an app for the Apple Watch, which is fantastic. Along with that app, you're gonna be getting Dexcom G7 notifications and alerts on your watch. Now, when it comes to Libre 3, there is no Apple Watch app. There's no app for any watch, but it does send alerts to your watch when there are notifications. So that's fantastic, but I really do like having that Apple Watch app for sure. There's also, for the G7, a Garmin Watch app, which I've done some videos on on my social media. So it's cool to see Dexcom partnering with people to bring their app to their devices. And I'd really like to see that with the Libre 3 in the future. Libre 3 also has a follow feature for people who want to monitor someone else's blood sugar levels. That is using the Libre LinkUp app. Libre 3 users can send an invite to those people and they can monitor from their phone. But unlike Dexcom, the Libre Link app does not have an Apple Watch app where people can monitor blood sugar levels from the watch. Accuracy. This is a super important thing because we want our numbers uh, that are represented on our systems to be as accurate as possible. They're never going to be as good as testing your finger with a test strip. Why? Because these devices are testing that interstitial fluid. They're lagging behind, still giving us critical information, but they're never going to be on top of the numbers. And even if they are lagging, they may still be off from the numbers before. The margin of accuracy is measured by something that's called MARD, the mean average relative difference. So the higher the percentage, the less accurate it is. So let's go through the different sensors and what their MARDs are. The Dexcom G7 has an 8.2% overall MARD for adults and an 8.1% MARD for children. The Libre 3 beats those numbers by a little bit. The Libre 3 has a 7.9% MARD, which may give just a little bit more accuracy over time. I'm sure all of you are asking, how much do these cost? And there is a big difference between the two. When it comes to price with healthcare in the US, you're gonna be paying a much different price than what these actually cost. They're gonna charge you based off of a 30 day supply or 90 day supply. So I can't tell you what pricing looks like for that. But if you're buying these outside of health insurance on the market, there is a pretty big difference in price. So when it comes to the Dexcom G7, I found it online for a pack of three sensors. It was $386. With the Libre 3, I was finding prices just under $100 for one sensor. So that not only means that these sensors are ridiculously expensive, but the Dexcom G7 is 30% more expensive than the Libre 3. So ultimately, especially when both these devices are working with closed loop systems, people may opt for the Libre 3 more often because it's less money, especially if they're buying these devices outside of health insurance. There you go. That is everything you should know about these two devices and how they compare to each other. I've got a lot more coming though. First of all, you should go check out my Dexcom G7 one month review. I'm gonna be updating it with a six month review very soon, but go check that out to learn more about the G7. I'm gonna be coming out with a Libre 3 review, wearing that for two weeks and kind of how that went. And then I'm also going to do another comparison between the two because I think that it warrants me explaining kind of the experience with alerts and with my Apple Watch and getting those readings every one minute. Of course, I'm not going to be able to really compare them when it comes to a closed loop. That's something I could do in the future, but I still think it could be critical information for you if you're kind of just trying to figure out between the two. These devices are also great for people who are using MDI, multiple daily injections. You're not reliant on these to talk to your pump. You can just take that blood sugar information and then inject based off of that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it. That will also help people find the video. And if you wanna see more content like this, as well as my podcast, which releases every Monday, make sure to subscribe. I've got a video coming every Friday here on YouTube. I'm Justin, and I'll take you later.